Hello and welcome back to our data project series on Rotten Tomatoes. To follow along with our data project, watch our previous video. In this video, we will explore the decision tree classifier, which is a machine learning algorithm commonly used for classification tasks and sometimes for regression. As the name implies, the classifier identifies data points into branches that consist of interior nodes, which contain a series of conditions, and leaf nodes, which hold a predicted value. By following these branches and evaluating the conditions, true or false, the data points are eventually classified into their appropriate categories. Here you can see the process visually. Now there are several happy parameters we can tweak when using a decision tree classifier, such as the maximum depth of the tree and the maximum number of leaf nodes. So for our first attempt, let's limit the maximum number of leaf nodes to three to keep the tree simple and easy to understand. So we begin by creating a decision tree classifier that is limited to a maximum of three leaf nodes. We will then train this classifier on our training data and make predictions on the test data. Finally, we'll assess the performance of our constrained decision tree classifier by looking at the accuracy, precision, and recall values. First, we instantiate the decision tree classifier with a maximum of three leaf nodes. So let's do that. So this is where we left off from our previous video and now we are going to follow here. So now that we've instantiated the decision tree classifier, we will now train the classifier on the training data. So now that our classifier has been trained, let's use it to make predictions on the test data and to evaluate the performance of our constrained decision tree classifier. We'll print the accuracy and classification report on the test data. And here we are. We'll also visualize the confusion matrix to better understand how well our classifier is performing. So now let's uh, run that. And here we have it. Let me uh, zoom out for a second. As you can see from the output, our decision tree classifier performs reasonably well considering we constrain the model with only three leaf nodes. So the advantage of having only three leaf nodes is that the decision workflow of our classifier can be easily visualized and explained. Continuing from where we left off, we will now visualize the decision workflow of our constrained decision tree classifier using the plot tree method from sklearn.tree. This will help us understand how the classifier is making decisions based on the features. So here's the code. So taking a closer look at the visualization, we can see how the decision tree classifier makes its decisions. For instance, it uses the tomato meter rating feature in the first branch to determine the classification of each test data point. And here's a brief explanation of the decision-making process. If a data point's tomato meter rating is less than or equal to 59.5, it's labeled as zero or rotten. Otherwise, it moves on to the next branch. And in the second branch, the classifier uses the tomato meter fresh critics count feature to classify the remaining data points. And if this value is less than equal to 35.5, the data point is labeled as one, which is fresh, or otherwise it is labeled as two, which is certified fresh. Interestingly enough, this decision-making process closely aligns with the rules that Rotten Tomatoes uses to assign movie statuses. So according to their website, movies are assigned the following statuses. Fresh, if uh, it's assigned to movies with tomato reader rating of 60% or higher, rotten assigned to movies with a tomato meter rating below 60%. So our decision tree classifier follows a similar logic classifying movies as rotten if the tomato meter rating is below 59.5 and fresh otherwise. So when determining whether a movie is fresh or certified fresh, the classifier needs to examine several features. According to Rotten Tomatoes, movies must meet specific criteria to be considered certified fresh, such as 
a consistent tomato meter score of at least 75%, at least 5 ratings from top critics, and a minimum of 80 reviews for films in wide release. But because we uh, constrained our decision tree model, it only considers the number of top critics reviews when distinguishing between fresh and certified fresh. Now let's see if we can improve the accuracy score by removing the maximum leaf node constraints that we set initially. So let me explain the code step by step first. Here we create an instance for the decision tree classifier with the default hyperparameter settings and set the random state to 2 for reproducibility. We then train our decision tree classifier using the fit method um, with the training data X train and Y train. We then use the trained classifier to make predictions on the test data X test and store the predicted values in the variable Y predict. We calculate and print accuracy score and classification report, which includes the precision, recall, and F1 score by comparing the predicted values Y predict with the true uh, values Y test. And finally, we create a confusion matrix plot to visualize the performance of our classifier on the test data. We use the plot confusion matrix function from sklearn.metrics with the train classifier tree, the test data X test, true values Y test, and a color map. We also pass the axis object AX to the function so that the plot is displayed within the specified figure size. So this is the final code and let's run it. And here is the plot and here are the results. So as a result of removing the maximum leaf node constraint, the accuracy, precision, and recall values of our classifier have improved. So the classifier now achieves a 99% accuracy compared to the previous 94%. This demonstrates that our classifier performs better when allowed to determine the optimal number of leaf nodes independently. Although the current performance uh, seems impressive, we can still explore further optimization to achieve higher accuracy, and we'll investigate this possibility in the next section. So the next part is random forest classifier. Random forest can be considered a multiple decision tree classifier together, as it consists of multiple decision trees combined into one algorithm. The random forest algorithm employs a bagging technique which involves random sampling of training data points. As a result, each decision tree is trained on different sets of training data. Notably, the bagging method uses a bootstrap approach for sampling data points, allowing a specific data point to be selected for multiple decision trees. Implementing the random forest algorithm is straightforward using scikit-learn. Like the decision tree, hyperparameter values can be tuned to increase the algorithm's performance including the number of decision tree classifiers, the maximum number of leaf nodes, and the maximum depth in each tree. In the following implementation, we will use the default values of from scikit-learn. So first we will create the random forest classifier instance. Second, we will train the random forest classifier on the training data. Then we will predict test data with the trained model. Next, we will print the accuracy score and classification report. And finally, we will plot the confusion matrix. So here's the code and let's run it. And here's the output. So the accuracy and confusion matrix indicates that the random forest algorithm slightly outperforms the decision tree classifier. So this demonstrates the power of ensemble methods like random forest in comparison to single classification algorithms. Tree-based machine learning algorithms also allow us to determine the importance of each feature after training the model. Scikit-learn provides the feature importances method for this purpose. Now let's write the code to see that, but splitting the code and providing it to you will make it easier. So let's do that. First, let's uh, retrieve the feature importance values. Second, let's display the importance for each feature. 
In the next stage, we will visualize the features from most to least important. And in the final stage, we will do the last arrangements by adding title, X label, Y ticks, and figure styles. Wonderful. Now let's see the whole code together and let's run that. So here's our output. The output reveals that various content rating variables like NR, runtime, PG13, R, and so on are not considered essential by the model for predicting unseen data points. So that's all for today. In the following video, we will explore whether addressing this issue can improve our random forest classifier model's performance. Alright, so stay tuned for that and we'll see you there.